It seems that Ricky, when he came round last, uh, destroyed my old iron. So I've had to resort to other things. Well, luckily for me, a friend of mine, the lovely Lee Lawson, who only lives up the road in Broadwater, she said, I can help you out, Richard. I've got an iron that will be just suitable for your quest of England and all things old fashioned. So I said, fantastic, that's brilliant. What have we got? And she very kindly donated to the cause this flat iron. Now I've always wanted a flat iron to use on my SE because it, trying to do it with the other one just doesn't really work. So the problem with this one, however, is it's old. Uh, it does say on it that it's, um, it's got a number six. I don't know what that means, but number six might, might be the weight or something or, or the, I don't know, the size. Maybe they get bigger. I know very little about flat irons. Um, I don't think that people who believe in flat earth have a flat iron. I'm sure that's not a thing. But because it's covered in rust, you know what will happen if I start to use it on my shirts? Ah, that. So what I need to do in this episode is try and clean it up a bit. So, I think the rust is only on the surface. I don't think it's terribly deep. And it's only the bottom bit that needs to be cleaned off. If I can just get that and get it nice and shiny, it will glide across my, my uh, ironing or my shirts and everything with such ease. I don't know why people ever left the old flat iron. However, the rest of it, it doesn't really matter because I think I could get some hammerite paint and just paint over that. Some sort of enamel paint would do that, dry it off and it'll look really lovely. A very nice ornament indeed. So I have here some sandpaper. So that should do the trick, surely. Let's get some of that. I guess I'll need something a little coarse to get rid of all of the sand, uh, the rust, so let's give it a whirl. made the blind bit of difference. I think I need to take more dramatic action. Uh, right. Oh. He hasn't been here, has he? Well, that didn't go as well as I expected. I went to one of these out of town, big do it yourself places, you know, big car parks, massive stock and all the rest of it. And the few items that I wanted, they didn't have in stock. And then when I asked for some help, they didn't have anybody on hand. I think they're all ill with the, you know what. Anyway, not to worry. Uh, so I've ended up buying uh, what I think <laughs> is a polisher and I think a buffer upper. And I'm hoping 
that it is. So we're going to get those attached to my drill uh, and see if we can get this in some shape or form. Drill. Now, where the hell did I put that? So, we have power, we have these two items. Uh, I think I'm going to start with this one. I think this one is going to do the initial buffering up on possibly the edges around here and, and the surface. And then uh, the idea of this one is to give it a bit of a polish underneath. Now, I wanted to use some emery cloth, but they didn't have it. And the bloke there had no idea what I was talking about. They did try to get someone to come to the tool department so I could ask some advice and nobody came. He rang, you know, on these phones. Oh, hello. Can somebody come to the tools department? We don't care who you are, a tool would do. Yes. And I was pacing up and down, minding my own business, waiting and waiting. And in the end, I just said, do you know what? This is just a bit, you know, rubbish. I'm just going to buy this and chance it. So 13 pounds later for these two items, we're going to see if it works. So first thing to do is to attach the that to a standard drill. Oh, huh. it's that easy. <laughs> right, see what happens. Right. Well, this isn't going to be easy, is it? This is this is very heavy, and this is reasonably heavy. I'm going to have to make some bed or something for this to sit on. Otherwise, can I do it like this? I think it. No, that's no good. I need to fix this. One minute. Ah, right. Right, that might do it. Okay, let's get rid of the kettle. So, that's working. That might work, let's see what happens. Well, it's coming off, it's definitely coming off. It's looking good, but there's a huge cloud of dust, little iron dust everywhere. So I don't think it's a good idea to do it inside. It seems reasonable out there. I think I'm gonna finish it off outdoors. Right, we've got it fairly shiny and I've also gone round the edges just a little bit here. Um, it's still a bit of rust on there. So, let's change to this little beast and see if that makes the slightest difference. So there it is. <laughs> I'm actually impressed. I'm actually surprised that it has buffed up as much as it has. There is a shiny surface on here. Uh, it would probably take a lot more milling, 
I think, to get it actually universally flat because it is actually quite pitted on the surface. Um, and so I'm really pleased with that and it feels nice and smooth. I'm, I'm, I'm very good. Uh, I'm very good. I'm very su surprised and pleased. So both these tools by Happy Stance have been perfect. The second tool was very much the finishing off one that gave it more of the gleam. And I think this first one is one that just took the rough edges off. So I've got those for further work, which is great. I've made myself a cup of tea, which is nice. So um, let's have a slurp. What to do? I couldn't get any Hammerite paint, which is what I was going to put on here. So I thought I might use, and I've got a tiny bit of this stuff. Yeah, it's black stove and great polish. So it's a polish and it comes out black and I use it on the SE and I believe one of my lovely viewers, Linda Kane, sent it to me some time ago and I have been using it and it's great. So I'm gonna just smear it really on the top section, I think, of this. I don't wanna put it on this band round the side because that may bleed and go on to clothes. So I don't wanna do that. But I think just the top bit and maybe round and then the handle, polish it up. I might leave the handle, I quite like the, the, just the rustic finish on that. Uh, so I might just do the rest and then just leave that silver. So I need a trusty old sock again. <laughs> I've got quite a few of these old socks. Um, what does that say about me? Not sure. Right, so let's bung some of this on the sock. I wonder how the best way to do that is perhaps. Oh yes, you can see why it's an old sock. Look, got a finger hole. Maybe to do it a bit like this, a bit on here, and then just smear it on like that. I'm not going to put a thick layer on and just smear it on very, it's lovely stuff, goes on ever so easy and then give it a polish, maybe with um, an old brush or something. We'll see how that goes. I love the smell as well. Right, well, I have put on the stove black polish, and there it is. There are still some holes um, where you can see the rust because it's not uniform, but it makes uh, a big difference. In the end, I did do the sides here. I just thought it was worth doing and I can always use the drill and just take off these sides if there's any black coming in. So I'll use a, an old sheet or something to practice on first of all, when we get round to that point. But because it's polish, which is the one, I've got an old shoe brush here. So I thought I'm just going to polish it up, see if we can get it just that little bit shiny. So I think that's probably about as best as I'm gonna get it for the moment. And what a beautiful, piece of apparatus. Now it's at this point I'd like to be able to tell you irons first came in in 1631 during the uh, early Stuart period during the reign of Charles I and they were used primarily to um, organize and f flatten the uniforms of the troops. I'd like to tell you that but I just made that completely up so that's probably not true at all. I have no idea when they came in and I guess Wikipedia is a, a free resource for you to look it up if you're that bothered. I'm sure you're not. The main thing is, it's a flat iron, it will work with my SE, and I'm going to give it a whirl. I've got to light the SE first, get that up to temperature, and get ironing.
I am amazed how effective this has been. It does get very hot and yeah a little bit of a little bit of the polish is going on my shirt but let's not worry about that but it is actually doing the job and as my stove gets hotter and hotter this is working of course compared to a modern a modern um, thingy uh, iron <laughs> a steam iron it, it's a lot slower but I'm I am amazed we're getting straight um, pressed shirts. I've got a lot to do, a pile of it. So anyway, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that's been interesting. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. And, and anyway, every time I use my flat iron, I don't have to plug it in and use electricity. So it's very green. I'm using the power from the SE, or the heat, anyway. I better crack on or I'll never finish. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Become a patron, support the channel and we'll see you next time we're out and about. Till then, bye bye.